This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. This is the third video in the lactic acid series. And in this video, we're going to cover the factors governing lactic acid formation in skeletal muscle. I would encourage you to watch the introductory videos one and two prior to watching this and make sure you understand ATP producing pathways. As a caveat, this video is an introductory video. This is just going to cover the very basics so you can get an understanding of lactic acid formation. So the first main point, you may have learned in physiology that lactic acid is formed when there's a lack of oxygen. And in this video, we're going to go further than that. Sometimes there's a lack of oxygen, but sometimes there isn't. And there's other factors that influence lactic acid formation. Number one, sometimes there is insufficient oxygen in the mitochondria. Number two, there's an increased reliance on glycolysis. Number three, when we recruit more type two muscle fibers. And number four, which will be covered in the fourth video in this series, is the clearance of lactate from the blood. And I realize this is the first time I'm using the word lactate. It's different from lactic acid, and that's gonna be covered in the next video. So we're gonna go through the first three reasons in this video as to why we may see an increase in lactic acid formation. So let's go back to the electron transport chain and recall that the electrons are delivered from NADH and FADH2 to oxygen to form water. So here we go, we've got NADH dropping off its electrons and they're gonna end up at oxygen, which receives the electrons, combines with hydrogen to form water. Now, in order for the electron transport chain to function, oxygen needs to be present. And without oxygen present, we get a backup of NADH. Like I said, with insufficient oxygen present within the mitochondria, we get a backup of NADH. As you'll recall from the introductory videos, what's absolutely essential for glycolysis to continue is the presence of NAD. Okay, so recall our very important point, NAD is needed for glycolysis to continue. And if we have an excess of NADH, that means there's no longer sufficient NAD for glycolysis to continue. So if NADH is unable to give up electrons and hydrogen at the electron transport chain, then there's insufficient NAD for glycolysis to continue. And therefore, as a stopgap, hydrogen is donated to pyruvate to form lactic acid. So recall, as a stopgap, pyruvate can become a hydrogen acceptor in the presence of the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, and this frees up NAD for glycolysis to continue. The downside to this is lactic acid is formed. Now, there's a lot of things that govern how much oxygen is present in the mitochondria, and this video will not go into it whatsoever. But in your exercise physiology classes, you'll learn about how the respiratory system can influence oxygen content in the blood. The cardiovascular system, including the heart and the blood, will influence the delivery to skeletal muscle. And finally, factors present within the skeletal muscle, such as how many capillaries and mitochondria, and the type of muscle fiber will influence how much oxygen is present within the mitochondria. So let's move on from the factor of there being insufficient oxygen in the mitochondria to the second factor that sometimes if we rely more on glycolysis during exercise, even if there is sufficient oxygen in the mitochondria, we're gonna have a greater lactic acid production. If you go back to the second video, in that video you learned that as exercise intensity increased, the rate of ATP production had to increase. And there are certain pathways that can produce ATP faster than others. So aerobic ATP metabolism is a little bit too slow. So in order to produce ATP faster, our skeletal muscles start to rely more and more and more on glycolysis. Call higher intensity exercise, we need to produce ATP faster. 
This is going to rely more on carbohydrate because glycolysis uses glucose and glycogen. And this is going to increase the speed of glycolysis. If we rely more on glycolysis, the products of glycolysis, pyruvate and NADH, are going to be present in greater concentration in the cell. So as you can see here, I've illustrated this. Instead of just having a little bit of pyruvate and a little bit of NADH in the cell, we have excessive amounts of it. And recall that pyruvate and NADH need to move from the cytosol to the mitochondria to be used in aerobic ATP production. So pyruvate needs to move into the mitochondrial matrix where it becomes acetyl-CoA, enters the Krebs cycle, and NADH is produced. In addition, NADH also needs to move into the mitochondrial matrix where electrons and hydrogens are donated to the electron transport chain and a whole bunch of ATP is produced. However, sometimes pyruvate and NADH is produced so quickly it cannot move into the mitochondria at the same speed in which it's produced. So as an example, here we have pyruvate moving into the mitochondria at the same rate it's being produced. NADH is moving into the mitochondria at the same rate it's being produced. And so we really have an accumulation of pyruvate and NADH in the cytosol because glycolysis is going so quickly. You may have heard the term glycolytic flux. This term describes the phenomena that glycolysis is going very quickly and therefore you have an accumulation of product. So again, recall we need that NAD is needed for glycolysis to continue. So if pyruvate and NADH are accumulating very quickly, it means that we don't have enough NAD. Therefore, as a stopgap, in order to make NAD available for glycolysis, lactic acid is formed. So let's illustrate this here. We have an accumulation of pyruvate and NADH. Hydrogen is donated to pyruvate to form lactic acid and NAD. So again, hydrogen donated to pyruvate, lactic acid is formed, and we have NAD available for glycolysis. So far in this video, we've covered the first two reasons why lactic acid is formed in skeletal muscle. That is, sometimes there's insufficient oxygen in the mitochondria, and at other times there's a very high glycolytic flux. Glycolysis is going very fast. In order to cover the third reason, a greater recruitment of type 2 muscle fibers, I've created a separate video, as YouTube only allows me to record up to 15 minutes, and this will take me a little bit longer. So please move on to watch part 3 of this video series, and you'll find the video link below in the description.